This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Made up your mind yet, Batman? When are you gonna ask me to join you in crook catching and in wedlock? Catwoman's green bodysuit, or well more aptly titled cat suit. Who remembers this one? Catwoman, the feline femme fatale of the Batman universe, has been tussling with the Dark Knight since Batman number one in 1940. She has had quite the history, not just in terms of her character, but also in terms of her costumes. There have been some shifts over the years. We've taken a look at some of her costumes before here on this channel. The short-lived, hyper-realistic cat head that debuted in Batman number three, and the more well-known first proto-appearance of the classic vampy purple dress with cape and leg slits for days. But in between when that costume would really cement itself in the Bronze Age, and Catwoman's sort of disappearance in the Silver Age for a large part of it, there would be some other costumes that would try and cement themselves. This with the rise of the comics code, whose strict morality and sex clauses made Catwoman a difficult character to navigate. However, despite this, she would resurface in the Silver Age in the 60s. The reason? The Batman TV series from 1966, which would utilize the character to great effect. She'd be quite popular on the series. And one factor in that was certainly the costume. Now, designing costumes and figuring out how characters should look takes time, and dare I say, skill. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes by a wide array of instructors with a focus on creativity and self-growth. If you're interested in expanding your skills, there's a class on here for you. Are you interested in animation, editing, how to grow or start a YouTube channel? There are classes in all those things. I'm always looking to improve, so I took a fun class about color correcting, because let's be real, it gets rough up in here sometimes. Jordi Vanderput, a YouTuber, has a class called Premiere Pro Lumetri 2020, Color Correct and Color Grade Like a Pro, which was fun, approachable, and got right to the fundamentals, and it was engaging. I even got a comment in my improved lighting in a video recently. So thanks, Jordy. With Skillshare, not only can you choose your classes, how long they are, you can also choose your instructors, leave off at any point because they're broken down into chapters, and there are no ads. So they're perfect for if you have a busy schedule. If you're interested in joining and expanding your skill set, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Julie Newmar, the first woman to portray the character on the Batman series, would appear in a Lurex costume specifically designed to her measurements, in a garment that was meant to balance being family-friendly, which translation meant covered, and also sexy, so it was very form-fitting and curve-hugging and emphasis. Cat suits occupy an interesting position in fashion, particularly on television. They fall into this interesting gray zone, where because all the skin is covered, they can pass themselves off as family-friendly no matter how tight and form-fitting they get, even if there's a whole camel in there, even if the world is pointing because the actress is cold or just pointy. Some people are just pointy. It's time to look at how the Batman TV series ever so briefly influenced Catwoman's comic book costume. It didn't last. Catwoman first reappeared on the Silver Age scene in Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane number 70 and 71 in November and December of 1966. Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane is a favorite series here on this channel. We've even covered those issues specifically. They're pretty great. Lois Lane gets tricked into being Catwoman for a bit. Now in this appearance, Catwoman is sporting a modified version of the purple dress in that it's a jumpsuit. Still with the cape. But in 1967, in Batman 197, the character would reappear donning a new costume. This would also mark Catwoman's reappearance to Batman comics specifically. Not Detective Comics, not Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane, not World's Finest, but Batman comics. In her reappearance, she was wearing a green cat suit, so it would be one of those stops on the way back to the purple dress. Now, the costume worn by Julie Newmar as Catwoman, for there are subtle differences between all three Catwoman 66 costumes, was quite carefully crafted. She gave an interview about the costume when she donated it to the Smithsonian in 2008, where it was later displayed on the third floor in the Museum of American History, deemed one of the national treasures of popular culture. Like Kermit the Frog or Dorothy Slippers. She described the costume's construction as follows. I believe the material was called Lurex. It was woven in two different directions. One is this reflective shine blue midnight that catches the light for the cameras, and the other was a black semi-stretch, although I can recall some wrinkles. Lurex is a special type of yarn with an appearance that is garnered by using an aluminum, silver, or gold layer vaporized onto synthetic yarn. Numar did customize some of the costume herself, stating, I put the gold belt around the hips because at the waist it enlarges the waist, and if you put it at the hips, it gives you that curvier look. That and the inside seams were sewn to my specifications. Stuff like that makes such a difference. It's why the mass-produced suits never look the same. It's also why if years later someone tries to take your historic costume or dress and put it on, it's not gonna work and they're going to break it, Kim. The version of the costume that appears in Batman 197 is modeled off both the season one and movie costume. This movie was released two months after the last episode of the first season. They were capitalizing on that popularity hard. Good. Struck while the iron was hot. There are some conflicting 
conflicting reports as to why Newmar didn't return to the role for the film. Some say it was scheduling conflicts, while a 2004 biography called Catwoman Her Many Lives claims it was a back injury. Regardless of the why, the role went to Meriwether, and Newmar would resume playing Catwoman for the second season, but be replaced by Eartha Kitt, who she recommended in season three. Meriwether's costume was very similar, but the neck area appeared much wider and more folded, probably due to the lack of necklace to break it up. Now, green is not an uncommon villain color, especially if you hop over to Marvel, but DC does it too. And there are some prominent theories as to why. Entire essays that you can go read or watch about the whys of the secondary colors being the villain colors. There's even a trope called secondary color nemesis. There are a lot of factors, the historical significance of the colors, the historical process of printing and how bright colors could appear. It's very interesting, but not what this video is about. It will be two hours long. As for this costume, the green certainly stands out, more so than potentially would in black, particularly how Batman is costume at this time period in the comics. That's one of the ideas behind the color theories, that they need to pop against each other, and that since Batman is so dark, his villains need to pop against him. The thing about this green is that it takes Catwoman away from her usual purple motif, which is already in the secondary color nemesis wheel anyway. So it's not clear as to why green was the color chosen. Maybe they try it out and just looks better in green than purple. Maybe it does have to do with the meaning of the color. Some of the negative attributes assigned to green, because of course green also has positive meanings, it has many meanings. But some of the negative ones are greed, envy, ambition, slither. <laughs> Boy, ambition is only bad if you use unscrupulous means to meet it. Now as for the story itself in Batman 197, it was written by Gardner Fox with art by Frank Springer, Ink Sid Green. It's following up on a story thread introduced at the end of Batman's story in Detective Comics 369, which was also by Gardner Fox, but that one had art by Carmine Infantino. In that story, which was called Batgirl Breaks Up the Dynamic Duo, the concept of Catwoman being jealous of Batgirl is introduced, because she thinks that Batgirl is trying to make some moves on her man. She wants a cat fight. You better get used to the puns, because especially in 197, they're going to be everywhere. They will leave you catatonic. It's going to be catastrophe. The Batman comics of this era were in a bit of a symbiotic relationship with the television series. There's a lot of horizontal marketing and playing into each other. For example, Batgirl had been created to simultaneously launch in the comics and on the TV series. The popularity of characters on the show did trickle back, even though some of the characters like Joker and Catwoman were out of favor at the time. So it is that in this story, Catwoman's characterization is much more campy, and her plot revolves less around her own villain agency and more around her female jealousy. Which was a thing, but it's dialed up to 11. And the flirtation is taken firmly out of the sexual realm and into the I want to marry him realm. Because in the golden age, there was a little bit of that sprinkled in. Papa Spank. The code cut deep. No more spanking unless it looks like the woman isn't enjoying it. I see you, Silver Age. I see you. It's not kinky, it's discipline. Sneaky, sneaky. The interesting thing about this is that when Catwoman is brought back in the 70s, at one point they go really hard and she ends up murdering people, which is something she didn't do even in the golden age. And that was back when Batman was capping people. She went so hard they retconned that to being on another Earth. So in this story, which is called Catwoman Sets Her Claws for Batman, Catwoman sets out on yet another one of her I've reformed plots to trick Batman. She's changed. He can fix her. That's not true. He doesn't even try. This time, she wants to replace Batgirl as the female member of the Bat Squad, a Bat family as it were. She's convinced that Batgirl is in love with Batman. The best part of this issue is how unbothered by that Barbara is. She's more annoyed that Catwoman is calling out her skills as a crime fighter, and that's why she sets off to challenge her. Plus, she doesn't trust her. What about you? I suppose you thought I'd be catty enough to want to see what my rival looked like, eh? I don't consider myself a rival of yours, Catwoman. I have absolutely no romantic interest in Batman, but I did realize you weren't to be trusted. Did you hear that, Killer? joke adaptation, no romantic interest. It's been years and sometimes it just pops into my brain. <laughs> what are some random comic book or adaptation scenes that pop into your brain? I need to know. This whole comic, Batgirl's giving her best, ma'am, this is a Wendy's vibe. The thing with the green on the costume is that in some panels, it makes it look like she has scales. So it makes her feel more lizard themed than cat themed. She's more lizard now than cat. So Catwoman is stopping all these cat themed crimes, which seems bizarre to Batman and Robin, but they can't figure it out. Batgirl does though. She does some research and uses her photographic memory, which she mentions many times this issue because she was a librarian and always researching. That's one of the things that made her evolution into Oracle also make sense because even post-crisis it was a callback to how much her character did research and always was looking for that to enhance her anyway. So she figures out that Catwoman is using her own gang to commit these crimes and then stop them herself. That's why they're still cat themed. She can't help herself. She was also only doing these crimes looking for a chance to show up Batgirl. She does this by fighting with a special cat of nine tails which casts a reflection that throws off Barbara's balance so her sweet judo moves miss. And she comes across looking like a worse fighter and feels incompetent for a moment. Catwoman goes so hard she kidnaps Batman to make sure that he marries her after he says that he's not that interested. Made up your mind yet, Batman? When are you gonna ask me to join you in crook catching and in wedlock? 
I'm quite satisfied with the way things are now, Catwoman. Villain zoned. Stuck her right in the villain zone. You can't escape my cataphonic trap. Those cat snarls form an invisible cat's cradle of sound waves, bounding back and forth like strings driven upon their fingers, which go right through your body to the brain's control center. Now give me your answer. Am I to be your bride? Or burglar? The answer is no. On your head, be it. Selena, no means no. We see Selena in this issue signing her best selling book. There is no need for this. She's ruining everything. She gets arrested at the end of this. What were you doing? Also, must we know that Robin is extra sassy this issue? It's great. I don't want to sound egotistical, Robin, but I've come to the conclusion that Catwoman is in love with me. Of course she is. Everybody knows that. But you, the question is, what are you going to do about it? Nothing, like he usually does. Selena unmasks Batman at one point in this issue, but he's painted his face where the mask lies black. And despite knowing Bruce Wayne, she's still like, who is this? His identity, it's impossible to discern, indiscernible. It's just layers upon layers of paint. Now this green costume lingers for a tiny bit. And if you've been here a while, you know that I wanted to find out something about how people felt about it at the time. Maybe some letters pertaining to Catwoman's new look. And there was one in Batman 201. Let's go, letters call him. Now most people seemed to like the story and were happy with it and were more commenting on the fact that Catwoman was back in general. But I did find one commenting on the new look. Letter time. Dear editor, Batman 197 was the issue that I've long been waiting for. After seeing how the new look changed the Riddler, Penguin, and Joker, I'm glad at the version of Catwoman you gave us. I'm happy to say that Catwoman, the Countess of Crime, is still as cunning, sinister, and exciting as ever. However, there's just one thing about her that's bothering me, which I will get into later. Now, as to what's been bothering me about Catwoman's new look, of late I've noticed that some of your costume villains wear green. The Joker has green hair, a green shirt, and once wore green gloves. The Riddler wears big black question marks, a purple mask, and gloves, and yet green is the dominant color. Except for her hair, Poison Ivy spore at a head-to-toe green costume. If you think that these aren't good enough reasons, then I'll give you the clincher. My high school math teacher's name is, can you guess it, Mr. Green. Now, to my dismay, Catwoman's new uniform has turned green too. Did you ever see a green cat? No, of course not, but you have seen a black cat, right? And black cats supposedly are bad luck, right? Catwoman is just what she is. Rotten bad luck. So please revise Catwoman's costume to overall black, perhaps with purple gloves, boots, belt, mask, and ears. She'll look much better, more sinister and mysterious, and literally be bad luck. Michael Lederman. There's such passion in this letter, and he's not wrong. There was a lot of green going on. But the writer of this letter didn't have to wait long, because by 1969 in Batman 210, there was a new costume. This one. But that's a tale for another day. What do you think of the green costume and trying for a more TV series inspired look? Or does it work better on the show? Now, Black Suit would eventually make its way into comics in the 2000s following years of much purple. So where does this costume rank in terms of Catwoman costumes for you? And how do you feel about green as a Catwoman color? I want to hear about it. Share your thoughts down below. While you're down there, please hold YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking this time today spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.